Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Uh, as you can see behind me, we're in the midst of a very wonderful uh, summer uh, thunderstorm where uh, it looks almost like uh, the evening, our late evening. Um, so I think we're all enjoying the summer weather. Today the topic that uh, I wanted to talk about is about anal fissure and how do we treat. We hear a lot about fissures and hemorrhoids in common terminology and I wanted to put up this slide which will explain to you how the anal canal looks. By means of anal canal I'm talking about the opening which is what we commonly refer to the anus and the extension that goes up about four centimeters as it leads into the rectum. The reason that the anal canal is a little different uh, from the rectum is that it's actually not exactly part of the colon both from how it how it develops in the womb uh, and how the our body develops so uh, it's anatomically different in terms of development in terms of nerve supply anal anal nerves are more the skin nerves whereas the colon nerves are from a different set that fall under the autonomic different nervous system in the body the third aspect of why this is different is that the blood supply to this area is a little bit different. Uh, the uh, rectal uh, uh, blood supply is from a different area and the anal, uh, anal uh, blood supply is from a different area. So in summary, the developmentally the anal canal is different. Nerve supply, blood supply and venous, how the blood actually gets away from that area is different. The reason I'm explaining this is a little bit of this anatomy is important to understand what's a fissure and what's hemorrhoids and I'm, we're not covering hemorrhoids today but it's mostly about fissure. When you look at that area, the blue marked uh, uh, area that we're looking at are the hemorrhoidal plexus. So what happens is that blood comes through an artery to that area and then it's drained by these hemorrhoidal plexus which are veins. So that's in, in a sense everywhere in the body. Blood comes through an area to an artery, gets drained away by the veins. In this area, there's two plexuses. One is the hemorrho internal hemorrhoid plexus that sits a little higher and the external hemorrhoid plexus which is right adjacent to the opening. They both drain separately and can cause separate problems. When people refer to hemorrhoids, they're either referring to that area as from the external hemorrhoid problem or internal hemorrhoid problem, but in, in many ways it's hard for you to tell other than uh, somebody who is a, a trained healthcare uh, professional or doctor to look at that area and to give us a sense whether it's an external hemorrhoid problem or internal hemorrhoid problem. The other aspect of this area's anatomy that plays into fissure is that there's two sphincters in that area, the external sphincter and the internal sphincter. The internal sphincter is actually the lining of the rectum towards the very end and normally it's in a state of contraction. That's what keeps the stool in. When we are ready to defecate, that area relaxes and the, uh, a number of other things that happen which I want to cover later in terms of constipation and how, uh, how this all plays together, that relaxation allows stool to come out. There's also an external sphincter and imagine this area when I ask you to say, hey, contract the muscles around your anus, you're actually contracting the muscles of, of the external sphincter. The external sphincter actually is a separate muscle that's under our control and that fuses with a band of muscle that runs from the uh, our hip bones in the front to all the way to the back and that muscle is called puborectalis. So there's two sphincters. So how does this all then play together? So remember two concepts that the nerve endings supplying the anal sphincter or anal canal area are more the nerve endings that our skin feels so they you know when we feel pain we feel pain with those with those kind of injuries what's happening in an anal in an anal fissure is probably because of constipation or some kind of trauma when the hard stool pushes out and there's a break the 
blood supply to that area starts going down partly because the muscle goes into the muscle that's around that goes into spasm because of the spasm and decrease in blood supply after the cut has been done the area doesn't heal and the combination of the cut and the combination of the spasm is what causes that intense pain what many of our patients have told us is that it's very intensely painful when we def- when one poops and shortly after and sometimes there can be low level pain in between uh, the uh, in between when we defecate or go to the bathroom sometimes it can heal on its own sometimes it doesn't not all of anal fissure is from constipation and this decreased blood supply but there can be occasionally rare things like crohn's cancer leukemia uh, and also uh, what i'm uh, when i refer to cancer it's anal cancer that uh, uh, causes this how do we treat it the big thing is to keep the stool soft through a combination of drinking more water getting some more fiber such as plant based material which is good sometimes we add additional metamucil or citrusyl which is artif- which is over the counter fiber but to prevent it i think in general to have a a diet that gets us a lot of fiber and water is helpful sometimes sitz baths can be helpful instead of uh, wiping hard on that area while we are trying to get that area to heal up the main stay of medical treatment of fissures includes a medicine that can relax that muscle such as calcium channel blockers sometimes we use an, a medicine called nitrate that relaxes the muscle and sometimes some numbing medicine like lidocaine sometimes we use pharmacies uh, locally like greenwood that compound these pharmacy if these suppositories for us that you can actually apply in that area and that can be helpful sometimes in about 30 40% of the time the second big way in which we try to heal these fissures in addition to of course making sure that the stool is soft is that we inject some botox botox which has been used cosmetically at the other other places is used here to relax that muscle increase the blood supply and promote healing that's in the range of 70% healing the last thing that sometimes as a fails as a, a fallback can be surgery where surgically on the lateral side of it meaning on the sides of it carefully surgery is done to sever the muscle so that the muscle spasm gets better and blood blood flow improves um uh, obviously that's uh, not the first go to but in the order of first trying some medical treatment such as these suppositories and how they work followed by botox and then if that doesn't work uh, uh perhaps surgery but what we can do is to make sure that the stool is soft make sure that if there is pain that is prolonged uh you bring it to the attention of your healthcare provider so that the anal exam and rectal exam can be carefully looked at so some of these other conditions cannot be missed and then should there be need for treatment uh these are the uh, these are the principles that we should follow as always uh please send me questions comments uh, your continued encouragement uh, uh is a big role in continuing to inspire me to do these uh, sessions thank you